Hello, I'm Nick Collier, the Managing Director of the City of London's office here in Brussels, and I'm delighted to be joined today uh, by William Wright, the founder and MD at New Financial, a think tank in London specialised in European capital markets, William. And we've just hosted an event here in Brussels today uh, with William and his team presenting their latest findings. So welcome to Brussels again, William. Good to so see you. So tell us about CMU. How much progress do you think the EU has made on CMU? I think the most important way of thinking about progress on CMU is that people are talking about it. It's at the top of the political agenda across Europe, has been now for seven or eight years, in a way that is simply unthinkable. Uh, both you and I have been in and around this market for a while before 2014 and the launch of CMU. And it, the idea that at a, an informal ECOFIN meeting or a council meeting, governments would be talking about the benefits of capital markets and stock exchanges and investment funds 10, 15, 20 years ago, it's almost unthinkable. And what are the, the benefits? I, I think one of the challenges that CMU has is that too often it's framed in terms of the industry, the benefits to the industry and not in terms of the, the real benefits for everybody in Europe. Ultimately, I think CMU is about building a more dynamic, more innovative, more resilient uh, economy, not for the benefit of European banks, European asset managers, or European stock exchanges, but ultimately for the benefit of hundreds of millions of EU citizens. And, and why has progress been so slow? Or at least it seems to be slow. I think there are a lot of reasons, and I think it's sometimes a little unfair when people zoom in on the slow progress on CMU. Um, building capital markets is a multi-decade endeavor. Um, the UK, the Netherlands, Denmark, the US have got decades, more, hundreds of years, head start on the rest of the EU. And we've always thought of the first couple of terms of, of CMU, the first couple of terms for the Commission and the Parliament uh, of CMU is building the foundations. But the CMU project itself is something that is going to run for the next four, five, ten commissions. But ultimately what happens is that the benefits of CMU tend to be sort of long term, quite diffuse. Uh, they will be felt across the EU. And often the perceived downside of CMU, particularly among local markets, national uh, market authorities, local market players, those perceived and sometimes real downsides, they're very real, they're very short term, and they're quite big. So there's quite a lot of pushback at a member state level. Um, and also the old cliche that the, 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 the EU is forged in a crisis. And that's, it's a cliche because it's true. And the problem with CMU is that there hasn't been enough of a crisis to which CMU is the obvious answer. Um, unlike, say, banking union, where banking union was the obvious answer and largely ready-made answer to the euro crisis in 2011. So that, but there does seem to be a renewed political impetus. We saw an announcement from the finance ministers and the Eurogroup, and indeed you presented to the informal ECOFIN in Stockholm. So, so what is going to happen, do you think, or, or is this all for the next commission? And what would you say are the priorities? Indeed, on the panel we just had, if we made you ruler of the world, <laughs> or at least you're of this part of the world, what, would, what are the top few things you would do? I, it, it, it's, it's really encouraging to see uh, an increase, a sort of recommitment, or an increase in the level of political commitment across member states towards, uh, I wouldn't say necessarily towards CMU, but certainly towards capital markets. Um, and yeah, I definitely saw that uh, in Stockholm at the informal ECOFIN. The, the challenge there is going to be translating that commitment into action. Um, it's very easy for people sitting around a table at a, an ECOFIN meeting or European Council or, or any EU institutional level to, to agree. 
and to commit, to reaffirm their commitment to this grand project, and then forget about it by the time they get back to their, their capital. Um, and I think the challenge here is that CMU, or Building Bigger, Better Capital Markets, is every finance minister's third or fourth priority, and therefore ultimately nobody's top priority, and therefore it can sometimes get lost in the weeds. I think the way to change that is to really, is to refocus the, uh, refocus CMU on capital and capital markets, not so much perhaps on union. We may see uh, in fu under future commissions perhaps a change in the name and the, slide and the direction and emphasis of the project. And really to focus on the tangible benefits to the European economy and to European citizens. Inevitably, perhaps, in the early stages of this project, and by early stages I mean sort of first 10, 15 years, there's inevitably going to be a focus on the legislative framework. And a lot of people in national authorities, national governments, still think of CMU as primarily a legislative and regulatory program, not an economic one. And the one silver bullet would be something like developing pensions from the bottom up, something like that? If every, th there are no I silver bullets mm. to, 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 to address uh, capital markets across Europe. But if every member state could be encouraged, required in some way, to develop auto-enrollment or to, to, to introduce some form of auto-enrollment pensions, to build this deep pool of long-term capital in every country from the bottom up. You're a big part of the answer there. Okay. William, thank you very much. Thank you.